G'day guys. Today I thought we'd talk about the English longbow. Made famous by the Hundred Years War, but it has in fact been in use for thousands of years previous. And there's so much to know, that's all coming up. everyone we're talking today about the English longbow that's this one right here this is a fantastic piece of engineering simplicity in its purest form incredibly effective the bows themselves were made from the yew tree the tips or the knocks made from cow horn the string made from linen the arrows were made from ash sometimes birch and the feathers or the fletchings made from goose feathers. In fact, the person who made the bow is called a bowyer. The person who made the string called a string fella. The person who made the fletchings called the fletcher. And the person who made the arrow and the arrow tip is the arrowsmith. It's all a family business. A long bow is typically a long bow. In other words, it's typically longer than the person who's using it, and we'll, and we'll talk about that in a, in a few seconds' time. Typically, a bow like this would have a range of around 200 to 250 meters, and in the later medieval periods, could be up to about 350 meters. It's an incredible range, and in fact, is a consistent range with today's military. We know from cave paintings throughout the uh, modern day Europe that bows such as this have been used for many, many thousands of years. In fact, we think they go back to around 35,000 years BC. Archaeological evidence has been found in some Viking graves. A bow was found in the Austrian Alps that dates to approximately 3,300 BC. And a bow was found in a Shropshire bog in a place called Ashcole Heath in Somerset, England that dates to around 2600 BC. So we know evidence, through evidence these bows have been used for such a long time. Although there's almost no bows that I know of that have been found from the higher Middle Ages. And quite possibly the reason for that is this is not something that you would pass from father to son. This is not a hereditary item, and this is simply an item that you would use, and then once it's done its job, you'd just get another one. They're very cheap, they're very inexpensive, and they're very easy to make. You'll notice the actual bow itself is quite narrow, but the depth of the bow is quite thick. Now this has to do with the amount of compression and the strain that can be placed on the bow and therefore the amount of energy that can be transferred into the bow string. You would be a preferred wood for bows such as this because they, it was a naturally laminated material. Whilst the outer is fantastic for holding tension, that's the outside of the U, the inside is fantastic for holding compression. So this is such a wonderful piece of wood because it is just perfectly designed for uh, using as a bow because the energy is stored within the wood. It can tolerate fantastic amounts of compression and tension and therefore um, it enables its uh, energy to be transferred into the string onto the arrow and loosed off. There were laws in England that required men of fighting age to practice archery for two hours after church on a Sunday. What this meant of course is that England had a fantastic standing army of experienced and competent of experienced and competent archers that would prove devastating to France during the 100 years war. And you can see this in archaeological evidence of peoples whose graves have been excavated 
because the bone spurs that develop in their elbows, in their shoulders, in their wrists and in their hands because of using a, a bow. In the early medieval period we believe bows would have been around about the sort of 40, 50, 60 pound mark. That is the amount of energy which is required to draw the bow to its full capacity. And the full capacity basically is about four inches or ten centimeters thereabouts from the end of the arrow. That means that I'm not overdrawing and because if I overdraw I'm going to end up with an arrow impaled in my wrist or my hand and that's not something that I really want. An experienced and competent archer could shoot very fast. We think around about 12 to 15 arrows per minute and certainly there are Arab texts which uh, confirm this would have been a requirement. There's no such uh, requirement that I've been able to locate for English archers as such but we do know that they through the Crusades that English archers would have been comparable to Arab archers. Bows like this would have been fast, accurate and under power. The injuries caused by the arrows would have been quite devastating to the people on the receiving end. As I say a range of around 250 to 300 meters or more perhaps for an experienced archer with a heavy longbow. Some longbows in the later medieval period could go to 120, 140 pounds. That, I say, as I say, is the amount of energy required to draw the bow right back to its full draw length. Approximately 33 inches for a medieval archer. Now these were not snipers weapons as such, not like the movies you might see today, but they were accurate enough. In other words, armies, I'm not sure if you realise, fought in large concentrations of people, thousands and thousands of people marching towards each other to fight. So at the end of the day it doesn't really matter if I hit the guy that I'm aiming at, I'm either going to hit the guy to his left or to his right or maybe behind him and that's completely okay. I'm going to decimate the rank. Alrighty guys I really hope you enjoyed today's video on the English longbow. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.